Alright, so this video is going to be on SyncThing. Uh, SyncThing is a very nice program. You may have heard of this, you may not have, but it's definitely worth trying out. Um, it is, it's a kind of, well, it actually answers a lot of questions I get. Um, some people want to know how to sync files between computers. They don't want to run rsync or something like that. They want something that they never have to touch. They never have to think about. They don't want to set up a cron job or anything complicated. Uh, they just want files to sync. Sync thing can do that. Uh, another thing sync thing can do is it can actually run on these odious devices. It can run on phones. So if you want to keep the files you have on your phone in sync with your computer, sync thing is a great thing. You don't have to do any tethering or something like that. In fact, this is what I use to keep. If I, you know, download a file on my phone, it will automatically through sync thing go to my computer and I can modify it or do whatever I want with it. Now sync thing works both ways. If you make updates on one device, it m updates all the other devices connected to it. So it's very useful if you just want to never have to think about keeping basic files in sync. Um, so sync thing pretty much is in any Linux uh, repository uh, for any distro. If you just pretty much uh, install it, it's usually it's in the main repository in Arch. I already have it installed, so obviously I don't need to reinstall it. But pretty, I'm pretty sure it's in Ubuntu and Debian and stuff like that. But uh, if not, it's in you know a PPA or something. Um, but anyway, uh, I already have SyncThing installed. In fact, I actually have it set up. Um, now, to run SyncThing, just uh, throw it in whatever command prompt you have. Um, and the interesting thing about it is that SyncThing actually runs in your browser by default, uh, which you might like, you might not like. It's not actually a command line interface by default. Um, but, you know, it's actually pretty useful to have this. Um, so this is what it looks like. Now, I already have mine pre-configured, but I'll, I'll tell you the basics of it. Now, down here, I'm going to get rid of my face for a second. Down here, we have remote devices. Uh, this actually is an old device. It doesn't matter. Uh, I could probably actually delete it. Uh, but this is my phone right here, my LG phone or something. Um, and, of course, you can see it's not connected. Now, to add different devices... Sometimes it, uh, SyncThing can automatically detect devices on the local uh, uh, network, uh, but the typical way to do it is go to the Actions tab, click Show ID, and you have this. This is the ID for this particular computer. So if I give this to my phone and I add this device on my phone, if I go down to this and say Add Remote Device, and I copy and paste that device ID in there, uh, I can add any device. And once you add a device on another device, uh, it's sort of a reciprocal, a reciprocal adding because all devices uh, automatically sort of add each other. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, that's really all you have to do to set it up, set up remote devices. And you'll see over here that I have folders. Now all of these folders are the local folders that exist on my computer that are syncing with other devices. Now the relevant one here is actually phone. So you'll see if I pull up um, my directory structure here, I actually have this folder phone. Uh, and this is really the entire SD card, or uh, it, might, it might be more than that, of uh, my, my phone, my Android device right here. Um, so the nice thing is, you know, I basically have the entire thing. If I need to do something, uh, if I need to get a file or if I need to do some kind of file operation that I'd like to have a computer for, I can actually just do it right here and sync thing will automatically sync it up with my phone. Um, so anyway, how you, of course, do this is if you check, you can, of course, add folders. Actually, let's add a folder as an example. Uh, so let's say I want to add a documents folder. Uh, the folder path is going to be, you know, my actual documents folder, and you can select what of the which device it is uh, you want to share it with, uh, and then you just click save, and that's going to be fine. Um, now, of course, uh, it's actually not transferring files yet, just because my phone is currently disconnected, uh, but it scans through them, makes sure every, sure everything's okay. Uh, let's see, there's some error in one particular file. It's not really important for us. Uh, at least, you know, for our example here. Um, but it takes a, a little bit of time to scan all the files, depending on how big they are, but um, we, we don't have to worry about documents. Now, once everything is in place, once all the files have been scanned, I'm actually going to log on to the Wi-Fi on my phone, and autom what automatically happens if you, you know, look at this folder, phone here, and if you look at uh, the remote device, in a second, it is going to pop up Give it a second. It might actually be a sec. Yeah. 
Sorry, my phone's a little, uh, the local internet's a little slow. Uh, but what you're gonna see is that this is going to be marked as connected. Um, and, oh yeah, you see, now it's going. So uh, it is now transferring files uh, from uh, the my LG device, my phone, uh, to uh, this actual folder here. And there are two items. Actually, the reason, the things I'm transferring is a video I just recorded on my phone. Um, so that's all that that's doing. Um, and that will be done uh, I might want to pause the video until this is done, so I'm going to I'm gonna do that. Alright, looks like everything's done. Uh, actually, I removed the documents folder because it was taking too long. Um, uh, but er all the phone folder is now synced. It was actually a little more than two files. I forgot I had some other new stuff. But uh, yeah, sometimes all of the files will be staggered. Um, and I will say, if you want, um, one of the other things you can do is go down to the edit uh, option here and you have some more advanced uh, things you can do uh, like for example uh, by default it's just going to choose what files to sync in a random order but one of the nice things is that you can if you want only small files first uh, there's a reason you might you know need that uh, you can set that setting or largest ones first or sort them by what's newest or oldest or stuff like that um, so you have a bunch of different options I, I don't have anything special set here but uh, that's something you might want to look into uh, which is pretty nice um, no, oops, do not remove that, please. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. It's behind my head. That's the option I want. Um, yeah, so uh, I should say there are other settings that you can set. Um, of course, I have a different GUI. I use the darker GUI and stuff like that. Um, just be sure to explore it. But ultimately, this is all you really need to know to use the, the web interface. Now, if I go to my phone folder, I think it's in the DCIM, yeah down here and you will see that I have some videos down here that I actually just recorded um, so that uh, yeah so that's what I needed um, so that's about it that's uh, all for the main interface I will say uh, you can look at the manual for sync thing and there are like again its primary interface is through the browser but you do have some options for manipulating it by command line if you need to uh, you know one thing that I occasionally uh, need is to get my device ID so oh, well actually it's right in front of you anyway so device ID uh, just prints out your device ID and I might need to you know use our sync to put it on some other server or something like that um, to use it um, but there are a couple other options here. The one, the one thing I don't like about sync thing is I like it to have a more cohesive command line interface. But you know, especially if you're a, a, a newer user, you know what it has is fine. And even you know, this is one of the the GUI programs that I don't ma mind using at all. Um, one last note, I, I don't think I said this before. Um, notice the address that it's projecting on. So it's going to be you know. Uh, to 127.0.0.1, uh, you know, your local host or whatever. Um, and then the port that it uses is 8384. And that's all we, I think you can change that, but that's what SyncThing is going to use by default. Um, so if you tell SyncThing not to pop up automatically, not to pop up a browser automatically, which you can set in the settings, um, you'll have to put the, you'll just have to remember this port or look it up by command line or something like that. Uh, but that's the one it uses. Um, so anyway, that's about it. I hope this is helpful. This is something, this is a tool that uh, it's really nice uh, using um, just because it can save you a lot of effort, especially, I mean, uh, the main reason I use it nowadays is just for my phone. Sometimes I keep computers in sync. I'm not using another computer right now, uh, but it is a very helpful tool just because, it, you know, it very, when you use something like rsync, sometimes there's a problem, uh, or which is a great command. I actually, I don't think I've done a video on that. Maybe I should uh, do one. Uh, but one of the things that rsync I don't feel does as well as sync thing is integrate, like if you're making changes on two different devices, sync thing will be able to you know sort of sort through the changes and stuff like that and make it you know nice and easy for you um, but anyway that that's about it so I hope you guys learned something and I'll uh, see you uh, next time